Story 1. The picture, perfect village of Byron Bay is located along Australia's rocky coastline. This paradise, known for its breathtaking beaches and well-known surf breaks, draws tourists and water sports lovers from all over the world. It's vital to keep in mind, however, that it's also one of the areas with the most shark attacks. In our first episode, Sarah Anderson, a daring Story teenage surfer, four. will tell the gripping account of her deadly encounter with a predator hiding under the waves. The swells. This young lady had always found peace and freedom in surfing, which had become her haven. But little did she realize that a set of extremely hungry teeth would permanently disturb her tranquility. Sarah Anderson, a skilled and dedicated surfer, paddled out into the crystal clear waves off Bogo Beach on a sunny July morning in 1981. She had a day off from work and decided to spend it with a friend at the beach instead of staying home and watching television. She and Amanda arrived at Bolongo Beach around noon and left their surfboards and other personal belongings there while they had lunch. They put some more wax to their surfboards and hauled them into the water easily after about 20 minutes. She expertly rode each wave as she savored the peace of the ocean on a sizzling hot day. She pushed farther into the distance trying to catch larger waves and the water felt cool. She was unaware that a hidden innate force was waiting patiently behind the vivid azure surface, ready to strike. These waters were guarded by the powerful predator, one of the sea's apex predators, an enormous white shark. It was waiting for a chance to let out its unbridled rage with its strong presence hidden by the depths. She was left sitting on her board next to Amanda as their session came to a close, thinking about how much fun she had, but something didn't seem right. They had been surfing for about an hour, catching a variety of waves, both big and tiny. As she instructed Amanda to wait and listen, she shut off their chat. There were no waves or winds to speak of, yet the water surrounding them was vibrating violently. The unmistakable outline of a dorsal fin slashing through the water caught her eye as she turned to look back just as her mind was beginning to absorb what could have been happening. A beat was missed by her heart, instinctively. As Sarah fiercely paddled on the board to fight against the approaching danger, her survival mode kicked in and adrenaline began to rush through her veins. She had seen the shark next to them and recognized the urgency as it closed in on them with great force and stealth, sending chills down her spine as she pushed Amanda to follow suit. They were caught in its surge, which bit through Sarah's surfboard and caused her to tumble into the ocean while thrashing madly. Sarah's screaming were drowned out and cut off by Amanda as she descended under the water's surface. She could see the shark flying high above the water as it clamped down on the plank. After a while, the shark released grip of the board and dove under the water once again as it flailed its enormous body about. It seemed like it may assault her again. Instead, out of instinct, Amanda paddled ahead. She shouted Sarah but to no effect as she turned around and saw her clutching to her board for dear life. Her eyes were closed, and she was spewing salt water. Between throwing up and screaming, I'm burning. She was helpless in the situation. Amanda observed Sarah being taken under the water along with her surfboard, which was still fastened to her ankle, while she attempted to turn back and maybe assist Sarah. When Amanda saw that the shark had come back, she screamed and fell on her surfboard in disbelief. She watched as the water became a deep shade of crimson while shaking in place. Finally, she caught sight of something. It was Sarah, but she was dead and dangling motionlessly in the water, her legs clearly missing. They had both been killed by the shark, along with her closest buddy. She said that she can't even recall how she managed to call for assistance or get to the beach, but that experience was enough to scare her away from being near water for the rest of her life. Story 2 Standing on the edge of the spotless beach was John Donovan. He stepped onto the warm sand with his bare feet. The sun was high in the sky, giving the glistening blue seas a golden tint. John was a restless traveler who was 
always looking for adventure. He had been drawn to this far-flung tropical location by the promise of unspoiled beauty and renowned surf. John had no idea that destiny had in store for him a terrifying experience that would permanently change the way he saw the ocean's depths. His thoughts was filled with flashbacks of his boyhood, spent surfing while he set up his surfboard. He had always had a mysterious affinity for the water that attracted him to it like a magnetic force. When he was younger, he would find any excuse to go swimming or surfing. He had been camping and spending his leisure time there for a few days at that point. He taught guitar at a neighborhood youth center and surfed sometimes. John paddled out into the expanse of azure with excitement. His eagerness caused his heart to race. John reveled, an experienced surfer relished the rush of the pursuit as the waves crested and fell in a captivating cadence that brought back memories of his youth. As he rode wave after wave, he felt a rush of exhilaration. His spine tingled as he felt the environment change subtly. Unbearable stress began to permeate the air. Unaware of the fear, he was paddling forward while face down on his board. It was subsequently discovered that a bull shark underneath him was watching John and planning to attack without John's knowledge. The terrifying being advanced with brutal accuracy. With an unquenchable desire, its strong body ripped through the water. With a bone-crushing lunge from below, the shark clamped down on John's leg with his jaws open, inflicting excruciating agony that rendered all reason useless. The whole universe was upended. John thrashed and kicked his thoughts, gripped by a basic survival instinct as he struggled fiercely for his life. Water surrounding him was stained with blood. After being violently removed from a surfboard, he opened his eyes to see the beast squeezing down on his leg with all the power he still had. John Claude aimed at the shark's eyes in an effort to blind the predator and buy himself some crucial time. A constant war of wills was going on under the waves. John's body was deteriorating and his eyesight was becoming blurry, but he resisted giving up because of his steadfast will to live out his anticipated life. He tried to stop it by gouging the shark's eyes, but it just made it furious. Thinking desperately, he extended his arms as far in front of him as he could, grasping the shark by the gills and tugging as hard as he could. Although it continued to thrash, John was able to take advantage of the situation since its jaws were still clenched tightly. John collected his every remaining power and surged in a last act of defiance. He managed to escape the shark's grasp, leaving a path of bloody flesh and suffering. He launched himself upward in the wake of the shark, panting for breath and hoping that the shark wouldn't recover too soon. John pierced the surface. His body was damaged and beaten. The unrelenting intensity of the shark's attack had twisted and ripped away his leg, and blood was trailing after him. A bleak witness to his terrifying incident. In order to reach the beach, he grabbed his surfboard and lifted himself up while paddling furiously. He saw the shark's dorsal fin in the distance and soon found himself in the distance and soon found himself in the shallows where he could get up and limp to dry land. He was in excruciating agony as he lay on the beach along the sea. John was aware that he had just barely evaded death's grasp. The water had changed from being something he trusted and felt secure into something he feared. Fortunately, several spectators fled to the beach when they saw the shark bite him. As a result, his leg was bleeding. In the days and weeks that followed, John started a difficult path of physical and mental rehabilitation. He was resolved not to let a shark ruin his life. Therefore, he made every step difficult but vital. He eventually made a complete recovery and kept his leg's motor capabilities. Story 3 Emily Mullen and Maya Ellis A isolated island in the middle of the South Pacific became their temporary home for two best friends who had an insatiable appetite for adventure. After traveling from Germany, they were on their fifth vacation day and eager to take in the sights and make some new memories while being surrounded by magnificent beaches and crystal clear oceans. 
It was the ideal environment for lazing about in the oppressive heat. They had no idea that their most recent excursion would take a startling and unexpected turn. With their surfboards in hand, Maya and Emily made their way to a remote cove that is a popular tourist destination. They had never surfed before, and they had no plans to do so. Instead, they intended to float in the sea while lying on their boards. They never felt comfortable participating in surfing. The sun was dancing on the sea as they paddled off, casting a bewitching tapestry of hues. They remarked on how nice the ocean was, praising its superb temperature and crystal clear water. Maya and Emily sometimes plunged into the surf. They would talk and swim whenever they needed to dry off from the sun. They believed there was no way anything could go wrong. That is, until one of them caught sight of a black object under the sea, scurrying around with alarming haste. The first person to speak was Emily, who urged Maya to return to her surfboard. When they understood how serious the situation was, a shudder went down their spines. Their urgent fight, or flight reflex, is fueled by the panic coursing through their veins. With each step, the predator's overwhelming presence became closer and more tangible. Second, Maya was able to remount her board. Maya and Emily turned toward the coast as their excitement soared. They kicked and thrashed as their pulses raced in time with the pounding waves driven by an innate will to survive. The shark followed closely following the dorsal fin that had broken the water's surface. Given how quickly individuals believe themselves to be moving, the shark has to be quicker. It took action. It jumped at Maya. Miz, Jaws is dangerously near to her leg when she snaps. Maya was on the verge of falling into the ocean when it almost missed her leg and hooked onto the surfboard, tipping it at a perilous angle. Maya responded instinctively by lifting her leg into the air and striking the shark on the snout, causing it to drop the board and slither back into the sea. The predator jerked back, briefly confused. Maya saw the chance, turned on her side, and paddled as hard as she could as her pulse raced in terror and hoped that Emily would do the same. Her unyielding will drove her beyond her breaking point and into the shark while she was unconscious, didn't give up in its pursuit. It pursued them but was unable to overtake them since they had already entered the shallow water and were safe. They had barely avoided the jaws of death and were left breathless and with achy muscles resting on the sand. Astonished and unable to speak clearly, the shark was seen to dive into the depths. Due of the shark's core skin, Maya's foot received severe scratches, although they were minor in comparison to the potential damage. The next day, they headed for home without sharing what had transpired. Story 4 Hawaii is one of the greatest and most attractive tourist destinations in the world because of its lush surroundings and alluring waves. One of the locals who found herself face to face was Emma Marsh, a young lady who considers herself fortunate to reside there, face of doom with sharp teeth. She lived on the promenade next to the ocean in Hawaii, where she worked as a dental technician and regularly went kayaking as a pastime. Emma had a natural affinity for the ocean, being raised along the shore. She grew to enjoy the ocean a lot. Wonders Max Axe, her devoted dog partner, also enjoyed going on outdoor excursions. They created priceless experiences by exploring endless beaches and secret coves together. Golden Retriever Max was devoted to his owner with unwavering loyalty. On June 23, 1996, Emma and Max went outdoors to the shore where Emma could paddle out in her kayak anytime she desired. She secured Max in the kayak's two seats so he could go along for the journey. They were able to go a fair distance in peace because of the beautiful weather and gentle waves. Along the way, she offered Max snacks to help him relax and feel more at ease. Emma thought everything was okay until she felt the kayak being violently rocked back and forth. She shrieked as something bit through the body of the little, fragile kayak and stabbed the sides of her legs drawing blood, even though there was no wave. The creature underneath her was trying to release Go and sink back below the surface. 
and its teeth were grinding back and forth as it did so. It managed to get out of the kayak. Emma struggled to keep her calm as her legs burned from the puncture wounds and her hands began to shake. As the animal raced for the boat with its jaws wide open, time appeared to slow down. Emma made a split-second choice as her heart rushed into her throat and her excitement soared. While Emma moaned in agony and attempted to guide them to safety, Max was barking and balancing on the edge of the kayak. The shark launched an unprovoked second assault. Max was being jolted out of the straps and into the water as it cut into the side of the kayak. He was already in the water, desperately dog paddling for Emma as she cried for him. Just as he was about to push himself out of the water, she put out her arms and grabbed him by the paws. The shark rose above the water. Max was once again bitten by the end of his rear leg, but this time the bite was not clean. She paddled back to shore after pulling him in just in time. While Max was yelping in agony and trembling in his seat, she paddled as hard as she could since the little kayak had holes that were seeping water inside. They arrived at the shore just in time as the water in the kayak was starting to weigh it down and cause it to sink. In a panic, she snatched Max out of the kayak and hurried him to her backyard so she could examine his leg. She somehow managed to cross the 30 yards to the shore without stopping. Although it was severely sliced, there was no serious injury. Therefore, he would be okay. That was subsequently confirmed by a visit to the veterinarian, and Emma's injuries were similarly very minor, despite being near to cutting tendons and arteries. Fortunately, none of those occurred. Emma could hardly bring Max outdoors, much less into the water, so the two were on the men for a few weeks after the tragedy. He never overcame his dread of the water, and Emma was determined never to put him through that ordeal again. Story 5 Nestled along coastlines of lovely Port Macquarie, Ethan Byers and Lily Monroe, two high school pals, decided they would skip class and go swimming instead. The day was warm for April. They gave in to a moment of revolt due to the monotony of their daily routine and the sun shining down from a crystal clear blue sky. Dynamic and adventurous adolescent Ethan proposed leaving school early and visiting a remote cove on the coast. Lily, who shared his desire for adventure, couldn't help but agree to join him and leave the restrictions of the school for the day. Bicycles were used for Ethan and Lily's excursion so they could return home more quickly. As they got closer to the cove, a hidden jewel set between rugged cliffs and caressed by the blue embrace of the ocean, the suspense rose with each pedal stroke. The cove was entirely cut off from any potential walking areas. They so believed it to be the ideal location where no one would discover them. The marine life included a wide variety of species, although the majority were little fish and the occasional crab. They quickly went swimming after leaving their baggage in a tree-lined cove corner. These trips were frequent among the parrots who had been friends for a very long time. The weather was perfect for swimming, so they relaxed in the water while swimming. Without a care in the world, they circled the cove while making jokes. The moist hairs on his neck began to stand up, however, and that's when things began to shift. Still swimming beside him, Lily turned around and sobbed as she began to thrash around in the water. When Ethan turned around to investigate, it was already too late. Behind them, a large bull shark was swimming right for Ethan without slowing down. The shark had already caught up to him and was choking his right hamstring, making it impossible for him to move his leg as he attempted to swim back to the beach. Lily, who was confused of what to do, since she could hear his tendon cracking beneath the water, started screaming. Once again, Sharks are infamous for not instantly killing their victim, but rather biting and bashing into it underwater until it dies. Ethan had experienced precisely this when he was below the surface. Lily saw the sputtering water reduce to ripples and become a deep scarlet as she sat there transfixed in astonishment and terror. Later, when she recognized where she was, she started to hyperventilate but she made every effort to leave the area and seek assistance. Both the cove and the other beaches were empty. 
she was forced to trek back to town in spite of the possibility that Ethan's corpse may be carried away if she didn't move quickly. Even though it had been years after the tragedy, Lily never fully healed. Years of treatment were required to help her overcome her incessant self-blame for what occurred. But she was never able to shake her nightmares or her sorrow for that particular day. 